<sighs> well, guys, it is the end of my week. Well, uh, at least it's Friday today. I don't know when this video is coming out. Today, I wanted to talk about the realities of consulting or honestly freelancing because the work can kind of jump or juggle between both. Um, you know, freelancing, I kind of put a little more on the contracting side and consulting is more purely, at least for a lot of people, is more on the advisory side. So more on that pure, um, just giving advice and kind of giving big picture management consulting level um, concepts. Since many of you out there probably want to consider consulting or freelancing as a possible next step for you, here are some realities that you're going to face to make sure it's clear that it's not all sunshine and rainbows out here. For those of you who don't know, I left my job at Facebook about three months ago, just in time to not be considered a MetaMate. Thank goodness, I preferably like to say ex-Facebook uh, versus ex-Meta, but maybe I have to do both now. So one reason I think a lot of people look towards freelancing or consulting is because they assume they get to be their own boss. And maybe you've heard this and maybe you haven't, but that's far from the truth. And in fact, you might end up having more bosses uh, now than you did when you were working at a corporate company. Yes, at a corporate company, you might have you know your manager and maybe a director that you uh, occasionally interact with, but more than likely, you're only truly responsible to one or two of those uh, individuals. Maybe you interact with other directors or managers, but at the end of the day, you only report to one or two of them and those are the people that make sure you get paid. When you're in consulting, more than likely, you might be running three or four projects at one time, of which you might have multiple people that are all kind of looking down at your work and deciding whether or not they're actually happy with your work or not. So the idea that you're now your own boss is far from true, especially again, when you're consulting or freelancing and you have multiple projects going on, you have a lot of different people that you've worked with and each of them have different expectations and levels of work that you're going to have to kind of learn and understand very quickly. When you think about it, you, if you work with a manager, kind of know what they want after a few months and can kind of have that flow in terms of how you deliver it. Now imagine trying to juggle a few projects at one time and probably having all those projects only range from six to 12 months. And each time you get a new client or a new prospect, it's all about learning again what they're expecting from you to deliver. And so that ability that you probably eventually get that you can kind of start to feel comfortable in your position uh, kind of disappears because you're constantly having to upskill yourself or prepare yourself to provide for different types of managers or clients because each of them expects something different for even something that you might consider a similar and deliverable. Speaking of projects, here's another reality. Unlike when you worked as an employee at a company, a project that you might be working on could end at any time. This might have nothing to do with your work. This might just have to do with the company or the client uh, deciding to switch directions. They might realize they do not have the capital to invest in your work. And so they might have to switch over into some other initiative. And when that happens, there's no, you know, moving you over and having you do the work unless it's very similar. If it's completely different work or a completely different initiative that has nothing to do with what you're working on or your skill set, they're not going to need you for this new project. So they're just going to stop the contract. And yes, there are ways you can kind of word contracts to make sure you know, you've know you got a 30-day notice, but it still means they can end that project within that 30-day notice and in turn, leave you one less client for the next month. This is unlike being an employee. More than likely, the only ways you often get fired is one, you perform poorly and don't meet the standards that they have set. And then usually there's gotta be a PIP and a few other steps. Or two, there's mass layoffs, which obviously happen plenty of times. You just hear, hear some headlines from some recent companies that we all were probably enamored with. So yes, of course, there are always ways you can be let go, but it is much harder for a company to let you go if you're an employee than it is if you're a contractor or a consultant. That is the benefit of having contractors and consultants. They often charge a little more, but one of the other trade-offs is when you either no longer need their skill sets or need to reduce your budget to look good for your board, you can do that very quickly. Now that you are one client down, a new reality comes in, which is you need to get a new client. And there's no, you know, doing client work and only focusing on that um, just for a three month period. But instead, you're basically spending some amount of your time while doing other client work, looking for new possible clients. So there's kind of this juggling around where you're doing client acquisition while also managing your current client base. Usually what you can do is time block a few hours at some part of the day to do some form of client acquisition activity. This could be reaching out to old referrals. It could be posting on LinkedIn, kind of some of your thoughts, you know, doing thought leadership type work, um, posting out content that might be more written or video such as this, or trying to work to create better partnership networks with solutions that kind of help you do your own work. 
There are a lot of other options as well, but I think these are the things that I employ currently in terms of like what I do to try to uh, improve my network as well as create new leads um, in order to make sure I'm both doing client acquisition and managing my current client base. Now, another challenge that you're gonna face is career progression. In most companies, there's at least somewhat of a clear uh, ladder that's put in front of you in terms of like career progression. Yes, you might not get that promotion even though you've done everything that they've said, but overall, at least there's a little bit more of a clear set of steps. When you are consulting or freelancing, career progression is much harder to kind of see. It's like, how do you know you're getting better? Clients aren't necessarily incentivized to sit down with you and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation to see how you could improve your services for them because you might not even be there three months from now. And without kind of a clear framework, you're gonna be the one who has to kind of have the discipline to kind of say, hey, where is it that I want to grow over the next six months to one year? You know, there's got, not gonna be a manager or director above you who's gonna kind of try to take some time with you to see where are you growing? Where do you have weak points? Where could you improve? So that means you're gonna have to spend a lot more time reflecting on your own self, on your own skills. And yes, of course, trying to have a conversation occasionally with your clients on how you could serve them better. You should definitely do that but it's definitely not as I think a big thing for them. So they're not going to be as incentivized to kind of have those conversations. But another way you can kind of challenge yourself to grow when you're consulting or freelancing is to find someone that is doing better work than you are in the same space. So consulting and freelancing and see what they do well and have conversations with them. Say, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is how I write my contracts. This is how I do my deliverables. What are you doing? How, how have you gotten you know farther than me? I definitely have those conversations with several people that I look up to in terms of like consulting and their skill sets because they clearly have things that I don't in terms of how good they are in certain areas. And I want to know how are they doing that? You know, how did they go from point A to point B? Because I think we often look at people and assume they just are at the point that we all want to be. But my only assumption is for most of us, we all are terrible when we start doing something and we need to practice it and practice certain skills and go through that period of not being perfect at the things we're doing and then eventually kind of get better over time. So for career progression, that's honestly kind of in your hands. It's both terrifying, but also kind of freeing. If you want to work hard and figure out how you can progress, you can do that. And, you know, instead of waiting for a 10% raise every year, you can figure out how to double your salary in a year by figuring out what skills are going to be required to get you there. It's of course a much harder proposition. Another reality I've definitely found strange is how often I need to drive conversations, only in the sense that I would assume based on the amount that I'm gonna be charging a client that they would likely be interested in the work that I'm doing. And sometimes if I don't contact a client every few days, they might not contact me at all for a week, which is to me again, very strange. So. Another reality is you are going to need to drive a lot of conversations. You're going to need to ping your clients every few days if they haven't messaged you, just to make sure they know where you're at. Personally, that's something that I like to do, just make sure communication is open at all times and to make sure that I'm still doing work that they find valuable because at the end of the day, again, like I mentioned earlier, if they decide that they're trying to save money or that your project is not driving the value that it should be, they're just gonna let you go. No hard feelings. It's not necessarily even getting fired. It's just the work you're doing is not valuable to them. So that means you are responsible for you and you will have to take care of all of the conversation kind of driving. You're gonna to need to reach out to them and say like, hey, um, this is what I'm doing. This is what I finished. Let me know if anything's changed. Um, maybe let's set up a quick touch base this week to make sure they can kind of see and touch what you're doing. So when it comes time for them to renew your contract, they are happy to do so because they feel like, yeah, this person has been doing a lot of great work and I am very happy with the work that they're doing. Consulting and freelancing can be very free. It very much lets you do a lot more of the work that you like doing. You can say no to projects that maybe you don't wanna do at all, but at the same time, it gives you a lot more responsibility in, well, you and how much you're making and your career growth. So if you become a consultant or if you're thinking of diving into freelancing, make sure you take some time to consider the fact that a lot more of the responsibilities that you might be taking for granted are going to fall on your shoulders. You're gonna have a lot more bosses to deal with. You're gonna have to deal with client acquisition. You're gonna to have to drive conversations that maybe you were used to your manager kind of starting up before. And at the end of the day, you could do all of these things right. And for one reason or another, a project just might end and your client might no longer have need for your services. And in turn, just drop off the face of the earth. And that's just how crumbles cookie. Hopefully if you're out there and considering on jumping into the freelancing or consulting world, this was helpful. I have personally been having a very busy week, but I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend and I will see you guys next time. Thanks and goodbye.